The work we presented today was looking at biomarkers or biological markers of patients responding versus not responding to an immunotherapy known as tumor infiltrating lymphocyte adoptive cell therapy or TIL ACT for short, it's quite a mouthful. Uh, it's actually one of the older immunotherapies, so there's a lot of attention lately with the revolution in immunotherapies. These are known as checkpoint blockades, ipilimumab, nivolumab, primbolizumab. These are antibodies actually that are targeted against T cells that are injected into patients. And these have revolutionized the treatment of various malignancies in the last few years. But there's an older form, as I was alluding to earlier, known as, as TIL ACT, and it's been around for almost three decades now. It was pioneered by Dr. Steven Rosenberg at the National Cancer Institute in the late 80s. And this therapy involves taking a patient's tumor and then in the laboratory growing out the T cells that are in that tumor to very large numbers, re-injecting them back into the patient to basically overwhelm the tumor. These, these T cells are reactive against the tumor. That's what the whole basis of immunotherapy is, is the fact that T cell populations exist that are able to kill the tumor. But like all the other therapies for cancer, there are some patients who don't respond. TIL ACT actually has a large response rate, around 50%. When you tally everything up, about 50% of patients respond, 50% of patients don't respond if you look at it inversely. The, the question is, why don't those patients respond? And that's the question we have to ask to figure out how we can make them respond. So we took a look beyond the tumor and beyond the genetics. So we're no longer looking at mutations or looking at gene expression in the tumor. We're looking above that. We're looking at what's known as the epigenome, epi being above the genome. And the epigenome is modifications to the DNA and surrounding structures that control gene expression. So all the cells in your body have the same set of DNA, yet a T cell is obviously different from a nervous cell is obviously different from a liver cell. They function completely different. And a lot of this is controlled by epigenetics, mechanisms that can turn genes on and off. They can silence them, they can make them dormant. So we hypothesized that there was epigenetic differences in the T cells from responders, non-responders. Because when we test these T cells, even the non-responder T cells are able to react against tumor. But obviously when we put them in the patient, they're not able to do their job. So we hypothesized that the epigenome was playing a role in this. We did just that and looked at the epigenome. We looked at two epigenetic marks known as DNA methylation, which is a direct modification of the DNA, which silences it and histone acetylation, which is a modification to structures around the DNA that allows the DNA to be expressed if there's acetylation of the histone. And we took a look at those, and we found a signature uh, where one type of T cell that we put in the patient known as a CD8 T cell, these are the T cells that are actually capable of killing tumor, the non-responder CD8 T cells or killer cells were more closely epigenetically, they resembled the CD4 population, which is the second set of T cells, or the second main type of T cells. Uh, and these are known as helper T cells. They sort of direct the immune response. They have their own functions, they're very important, but they function differently than the killer T cells. And again, we found the CD8 positive TIL of non-responders, they looked more like CD4s epigenetically than the CD8 TIL of responders. In addition to this, we looked at the tumor and the tumor immune infiltrate, and we found dysregulation of a host of genes that control these marks, that control DNA methylation, that control histone acetylation. So we have gene expression changes that lead to changes in the epigenetic code or the epigenome that lead to, we believe, to this functional TIL that are no longer properly able to kill tumor. The end result of this is failed patient response. So part of the data we presented showed that you could actually correct this with the addition of epigenetic drugs. So these are drugs that are actually in the clinic already to treat things like T-cell lymphomas, so malignant T-cells or other hematological malignancies. They're various inhibitors of a class of molecules known as HDACs, which regulate this epigenome that we saw. So we took those HDAC inhibitors and we grew T cells in the presence of those HDAC inhibitors. And our results show that we're able to correct, at least partially, the dysregulation that we saw in non-responders and make these T cells better capable of combating tumor. They are, they're more effective. So we're, we're quite excited about these data and we're moving forward to put this in the clinic. We're trying to start clinical trials based on this data currently.